Okay, so these are all quadrilaterals. They're all four-sided figures. Okay, a parallelogram is kind of the general uh, shape. Okay, but then we can get a little bit more specific. So the first quadrilateral that gets more specific than a parallelogram is a rectangle. So everything that we talk about, the properties of parallelograms, apply to a rectangle, but we get a little bit more specific. Okay, not only are the opposite angles congruent and consecutive angles supplementary, but all of the angles are right angles. Y'all know this about rectangles, you've known this for forever, that all the angles are right angles, but this same property still apply. 90 plus 90 is 180. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory there. Okay, another thing that gets more specific is that the diagonals are congruent. Okay, not only do they bisect one another, they are also equal in measure. For just a general parallelogram, they were not. Now, those are really crappy diagonals there, but <clears throat> they are congruent. Um, so, what happens is, okay, if that's bisected, or they're the same length, then all of these halves of these diagonals are congruent to one another. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure why there are two pictures there. That's the only way you can draw the diagonals. But anyways, um, the diagonals are congruent to one another. So when they bisect, you have four equal pieces. Okay, as opposed to with parallelograms, we had two pairs that were equal. Okay, getting a little bit more specific than a rectangle is a rhombus. On your paper there, it says properties of rhombi. That's the plural of rhombus. They're not rhombuses. They're rhombi. <clears throat> That's a fun word to say, I think. Okay, so all the properties of parallelograms apply. Um, but we have four congruent sides. All the sides are congruent. So it's a parallelogram with four congruent sides, but it's not a square. Okay, it's not a square. It's like a, it's like a tilted square. Four congruent sides. <clears throat> now, these diagonals, not only do they bisect one another, they bisect each other at a right angle. They are perpendicular. So, and I actually drew those fairly decently. They meet at a right angle there in the middle. So, um, we actually have four right triangles within a rhombus. That's an interesting thing. And then if we add together the idea that these sides are congruent, that could help us somehow solve um, a problem. And then the diagonals also bisect each other here. Now, a rhombus is not a rectangle, so those diagonals are not necessary. Or you know what? Actually... I'm not sure if those are congruent or not. I feel like they should be congruent. I think I'll, yeah. I think those diagonals are congruent as well. The picture is kind of messing with me. I don't think the picture is 100% accurate. I think those diagonals <clears throat> um, are equal. Let me erase that right there. You should have two lines. All of them should have two lines. Okay, and also with the rhombus, when these diagonals come in here, they bisect these opposite angles. So when this comes in, it bisects that angle, it cuts it in two, and then this one cuts the other one in two. But like I said, I think these are all congruent <clears throat> um, angles here. So, I don't know, it's tilted on its side. I don't think they are. Okay, so if this whole angle right here was 60 degrees, when the diagonal bisects it, we get 30 degrees. Okay, we get 30 degrees right here. 
oh no, it can't be congruent. Because if that's a right angle and that is 30 degrees, <clears throat> then this would be 60 degrees. So this one would be 120. So those lights are not congruent. Or those diagonals are not congruent. Okay. I was right, they're not congruent. Okay. Now, a square is a very specific type of a rhombus. Um, now, there's not a picture on that paper for you to do a square, but I've got one over here. Um, so I'm going to mark it up with uh, all the different properties that we've talked about here. So, and we also need to make a correction on the rectangles. Um, I got this from another teacher and I didn't proofread it before I put it together. So um, under the, the properties for rectangles, it's not for congruent sides. Um, it's um, for right angles. And the diagonals are not perpendicular, the diagonals are congruent. It was, I think she accidentally just copied the rhombus to rectangles. So anyways, let's, let's mark a square with all the properties that we know about it. Um, it has two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, the top is parallel to the bottom, the left side is parallel to the right side. These are pretty common sense, but um, then we also have that all four sides are congruent. That comes from uh, being a rhombus. Okay, four congruent sides comes there. Opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent. Uh, let's see here. Let's put in our right angles. So that comes from the rectangles. But that also satisfies that opposite angles are congruent. That also satisfies that consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay, so then let's look at our diagonals. Okay, so when we draw this diagonal in here and this one in here, okay, what happens? They bisect each other, they cut each other in half, and um, they are congruent. So all of these lengths are congruent right here. The diagonals are perpendicular. We've got right angles right here in the middle. Oh, yes, yes. I made that mistake in first period. Thank you. Mark the diagonals with two lines um, because they are not, they are all congruent to each other, but they are not congruent to the sides of the square. Um, let's see here. And then the last one that we haven't talked about is that the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So these 90 degree angles are bisected into 45 degree angles. So we've got a bunch of 45, 45, 90 triangles in here. So just as a little review of our special right triangles, let's say that, um, what if I said that one of the di uh, bisected diagonals um, was three inches, what would be the length of the side of the square? Y'all remember those 45, 45, 90 triangles? The two legs, it's not five. Three times the square root of two. 45, 45, 90, the two legs have the same length. And then the hypotenuse is the leg length times the square root of two. Um, the 3 4 5 triangle is another case. That was just a special right triangle. That wasn't like a 45 45 90. Okay? All right, now this one is not on your paper. I just want you to look at the properties because this is not in the course of study, but it falls within this family, so we want to talk about it as well. Uh, trapezoids, okay? 
You don't have to write this down. I just want you to watch and listen. Um, trapezoids have exactly one pair of parallel sides. So a trapezoid is not a parallelogram, um, but it is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. So let me remind you of something. A trapezoid doesn't always have to look like that. A lot of people tend to overlook a right trapezoid, okay, one that has a right angle in it. That's also a trapezoid, okay? It All it has to have to be a, a trapezoid is that it has one pair of parallel sides and have four sides. Um, the median, okay, the median connects um, halfway between both legs. So it's right here in the middle, obviously it's the median, um, but it's one half times the average of the two bases. When you add um, the two bases together and divide by two, you get the median. So if this base were, let's say three, and this base were five, then three plus five is eight, the median would be four, okay? Uh, if we get a little bit more specific and talk about an isosceles trapezoid, an isosceles trapezoid is like an isosceles triangle um, that has two congruent legs. Well, the same thing is true about an isosceles trapezoid. So we've got the parallel legs or parallel bases, and then the legs are congruent to each other. And if those legs are congruent to each other, then the diagonals are congruent. They do not bisect each other. I think it's pretty obvious from that picture that they don't bisect. They don't cut each other in half, but the diagonals themselves are congruent. And then our base angles are congruent. So the two on the bottom are the same, and the two on the top are the same in an isosceles trapezoid, okay? Only in an isosceles trapezoid, a regular trapezoid you don't necessarily have those congruent angles, okay? Um, don't forget that a trapezoid could also be inverted. It could look like this, so same deal. These would be congruent, and these would be congruent. 